Welcome to Weld.com. I've had a couple people ask me recently, and even my students, I'll, I'll set them up with a little loaner package because they want to learn how to do this. Walking the cup and manipulating the TIG torch and the filler wire at the same time, there's no substitute for this. You, you need to feel it, you need to see it. So to me, uh, you can get a couple of pointers and start out with, but you know, let's just get a, let's just get a dummy dry rig torch or a dummy torch or something and set it up. This is a Pyrex cup, the glass lens, you can see through it. But if I had a straight line on a, on a piece of plate and I wanted to kind of teach myself, I'll just come over here and get comfortable and I'm gonna hang on to this real light. And I wanna follow the line. So the number one thing is my torch angle, okay? So I'm gonna lean this back about 10, 15, 20 degrees here. Let's go, let's go 15 degrees back. And just to start out with, I want to follow this line. I want to keep the tungsten off of the plate the same height. Okay. I want to practice that repeatedly. Need to slow down like 1,001, 1,001, just like you're going eighth of an inch at a time to start with. And you follow that as best you can. After a while, you'll probably want to introduce and learn how to do a dab technique. So again, same torch angle, same arc length, put the wire on the leading edge and just get used to this. Maybe feel like you're pushing the wire diameter into the pool and follow along. To me, this is easier than what I just got through demonstrating and trying to follow that line, okay? And we practice that repeatedly until you get comfortable with it. You know, seems simple enough. And then, you know, everybody wants to walk the cup. You know, that's the coolest thing of all time is to walk the cup and it is cool and it's fast and you can lay down some material in a hurry. This Pyrex cup is probably not gonna treat me very well. I'm gonna put this upside down. This is extremely slippery. <laughs> this is a big challenge in, in itself. So, you know, the last thing I want to do is hang on to this with a death grip. You got to relax. You need to relax. Generally, when I'm on a piece of pipe, I'm hanging on to this with like two fingers and, and my ring finger on the back side. And that's how I manipulate this torch. And it feels very comfortable for me. Upside down, kind of the same way. There are times I'll hook my finger around the backhand cap get comfortable with it, but here's the deal. You are not gonna make this cup move by pushing on it or by pushing it into the material. That's not what it's all about. Since this is so slippery, I need to back off. I'd probably have a better go of it if I got over here on the sanded part. And even that is slippery. Yeah, I'm moving that back and forth. This would work well in a groove and we'll get to that in a minute but I have a ceramic cup, okay? I've drawn two parallel lines here about half inch apart and I wanna stay between those. This is not a contest or a race for speed. I'm just gently moving that back and forth in kind of a figure eight rocking motion. We go real slow. This cup is moving forward on its own. I'm not pushing it forward. It is simply by the rocking and rotating it back and forth. So let's say I'm rotating it 30 degrees, rocking over here, rotating it 30 degrees, rocking over here. And that's the pattern that you see in these beautiful welds that you're looking on an Instagram, these stainless overlapping figure eight looking welds. It's all done like this. And some of these guys, I mean, you get into it, they're going quick, okay? Again, light pressure. I'm not pushing this thing forward. If I was pushing it forward, I'd slip, you know? So you gotta relax, be cool. Here's the last thing about this. I already have these tacked together in <clears throat> about a eighth inch gap or more. Should be about 532. Have an eighth inch filler wire that'll fit down through here. 
Let's try the old Pyrex cup here, the old see-through job and see what it does. Pretty slippery. I'm gonna extend this tungsten out quite a ways. Generally, when you're TIG welding, generally, uh, you stick the tungsten out, whatever the, whatever the inside diameter or the exit hole is here on your cup, that's about how far you can stick it out. However, when we're down in a groove, we want to stick it out slightly further. Okay, so just for dry training, we're not welding. I'll stick the wire through the inside here a little bit. And... Okay, what I want to do with the wire, there's two ways to introduce the wire uh, out here in front or from the back side. Let's go to the front side first. Let's learn one at a time. Okay, so I want to keep the wire down low when we're doing a root with a TIG root, we want to get 100% penetration. We want to be down low with the wire. Last thing you want to do is be melting wire with the arc and throwing it in the groove. You're not going to get penetration. There's no arc force with this per se. You're not driving this in there. It's done by technique. So keep this wire down low. I have about a 16th root face on these plates. And, and so as I'm I'm down here and I want to just wiggle this torch back and forth about the width of the root opening and I want to keep the wire even with the bevel face, the root face down in there low. Now I'm pulling up on this which is opposite of what we'd be doing. Obviously we'd be feeding wire. I like to use larger diameter wires so I feel like I'm just balancing it right on the leading edge of the pool all the time. and it, it's kind of a, you can watch it drip off and, and um, I want to say it's like pulling it off the end of the wire and melting it in there. But I, if, I ever, <clears throat> if I ever get to a point where I'm too hot or I'm not balancing the wire on the leading edge and the wire ejects from the weld pool, one of two things happen. Usually it creates a big old button on the backside because I didn't get off my heat fast enough. Um, the other it could come back out on the front side where it's real flat. So I'm gonna hold this down in here low and just walk this along. So I'm practicing my torch angle, the pressure that I have against the bevel, and I'm also practicing the weave width, and I'm practicing keeping this down inside the pool, down inside where the bevel is. Make sense? Now, the other way would be to feed the wire from the backside. Let's just, let's just do this where we're pointing this pretty much straight in, actually about off the angle off of that plate, let's just, let's just call it 45 degrees. Okay, so I now have the wire on the backside. And you can do your filler wire hand only. Okay. And, and make that go all the way up so you're used to it. Next thing you can do by itself is do this again without the wire. When you get real comfortable and confident with that, put the two of them together. So I'm kind of following this right along keeping the tungsten and the filler wire right there pointing at each other and going up this joint. Okay? I guess the last thing you could do as you're practicing this, people hold filler wires and feed it differently. And there's different situations that you'll get into. I've seen guys that'll roll a wire and feed it. And I've seen guys that'll do this. It kind of depends on what situation you're in. Plate, pipe, pipe, I generally kind of roll it and rest it on the tack and it's feeding. Let me back up here. It's kind of like this. And it's rolling down out of my hand. 
I worked with an old man. I, I can't do this at all. I worked with an old man one time that could grab the end of a piece of 36 inch TIG wire and feed it directly through a piece of 10 or 12 inch pipe and put the root in with the wire feeding from holding on to the very end of it. <laughs> I'm nowhere close to that. I mean, if I move this just a little bit up here, it moves a lot down here. And he was just, he was that smooth. He was that, that steady very comfortable and very confident in what he was doing. He's a, a really good welder. So I hope this helps. You know, there's a couple things that you can do. If you have comments or questions, get a hold of me and we'll see if we can help you out. Uh, very inexpensive. I've, I've loaned a piece of plate, beveled plate, the stand, the dry rig out and a piece of filler wire at night and let somebody practice at home or bring it back the next day so we can, so we can get our stuff back. Torch head's pretty inexpensive. If you're gonna go into this craft, you might as well invest in some tools. This may be something that you just, you know, if you're gonna go into it, uh, you, you can do it on a machine with the machine off. Doesn't matter, it's got the whole weight of the cable on there too, but just for practice at home. Uh, this ceramic cup feels way different than that glass Pyrex cup. I can actually kind of feel a resistance And I'm smoother with this ceramic cup than I was the Pyrex. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching Weld.com. Make sure you subscribe to the videos. Thank you.